And now, WBW Theatre. Welcome to WBW Theatre. Listen to a series of radio dramas, comedies, mysteries, thrillers, westerns, all dedicated to preserving the golden age of radio. Those thrilling days of yesteryear, way back when families gathered together around the living room radio to join the theater of the mind. Listen now, as we take you way back when imagination ruled and creativity had no limits. Listen now to... WBW Theater. The Esso Five Star Theater tonight presenting Groucho and Chico Marx. The Way Back When Theater starts another week of programming with presentations of a scope, magnitude, and variety never before assembled under one banner, under the patronage of the Standard Oil Companies of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Louisiana, and the Colonial Beacon Oil Company, the Way Back When Theater will present a brand new radio attraction every other Friday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Two stellar productions every other week, every other Friday night with the world's greatest singers, musicians, actors, writers, and speakers collaborating in a giant entertainment program for your enjoyment. This, in a word, is the Way Back When Theater, and here is this week's programs. Tonight, the inimitable Nick Matthews and Ryan Kiernan, starring in Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. And now for tonight's feature... Nick Matthews is here, ready for his role as Waldorf T. Flywheel, black mustache, horn rim spectacles and all. There's Ryan Kiernan, too, looking just the way he does in the pictures, ready to portray Emmanuel Ravelli, Italian accent and all. The orchestra is tuning up. The overture is about to begin. The curtain is rising on the offices of Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. That's Miss Dimple at the switchboard. Law offices of Flywheel, Shyster, and Flywheel. No, Mr. Flywheel isn't in. He's in court, trying your husband's case. Uh-huh. Just a second. Here he is. Oh, Mr. Flywheel, here's Mrs. Watson on the phone. Good, I was just going to call her. Hello, Mrs. Watson, how are you? That's fine. Your husband? Oh, yes, I meant to tell you. He got five years in prison. But don't worry, Mrs. Watson, I've got a very pleasant surprise for you. I'm going to knock 10% off my bill. Goodbye. Miss Dimple, Miss Dimple, put down that telephone book. This office is no place for a bookworm. Yes, Mr. Flywheel. Any mail this morning? Yes, there's a letter from the typewriter company. They say you haven't paid for the typewriter yet. Why should I pay for the typewriter? You're the only one who uses it. But, Mr. Flywheel, never I... Never mind. Take a letter, those cheap chiselers. Uh, gentlemen, I never ordered that typewriter. If I did, you didn't send it. If you sent it, I never got it. If I got it, I paid for it. And if I didn't, I won't. Best regards. Anything else, Mr. Flywheel? Yes, love and kisses. But don't send them. They're for you. And now, take a letter to the Peerless Building Supply Company. Gentlemen, I refuse to accept a penny less than $50 for the electrical fixtures in my office. In case I do not hear from you, I shall conclude that you do not wish to pay more than $12. So in order to lose no time, I shall accept the $12. But, Mr. Flywell, you can't sell those fixtures. They belong to the landlord. Well, he ought to be glad I'm only selling his fixtures so I can pay for his rent. Say, tell that assistant of mine to wrap up the chandelier. Mr. Ravelli, he isn't in yet. Well, when he comes in, you better tell him to take out more fire insurance. I'm going to fire him on Saturday. Why, here he comes. Hello, Mr. Ravelli. Hello, Miss Dimp. Hello, boss. Ravelli, do you realize you're on half an hour late? I couldn't help it, Mr. Flywheel. I fell down a whole flight of stairs. Well, does it take a half hour to fall down one flight of stairs? Anyway, I don't believe that story. All right, if you don't believe that story, I'll tell you another one. I came in late because I had a little money trouble at a house. Money trouble? Yeah, my little brother, he swallowed a nickel. 
Really? What did you do? Well, next week's his birthday anyway, so I let him keep the nickel. Hey, stop jabbing and clean out my desk. I cleaned out the desk yesterday. That's where I got the nickel. Come in. Ravelli, I'm going into my private office. When I come back, I don't want to catch you loafing. All right, if you don't want to catch me loafing, you better whistle before you come out. I said come in. Mr. Ravelli, I think he's selling something. Well, well, well. Just what I like to see. A busy little office with oh, bright smiling shut fake. up. Uh, excuse me, you see. I, I represent the Excelsior House to House Merchandise Company. Well, there's nobody there by that name. This is Flywheel's office. You don't understand. If you'll just give me a moment of your time, I'd like to show you a few choice values in neckties, safety razors, hair tonic, say... Let me tell you about this tonic. It's the real thing. All right, give me a taste. No, no. Now, before I began using this tonic, my hair was getting pretty thin. But it don't look so fat now. Oh, you just try it once. We guarantee every bottle. Oh, the bottle, she looks all right, but I think the stuff inside is no good. Hey, how much for that necktie? Now you're talking. I'm going to sell you that tie for a dollar. A dollar? Yes, brother. And it's a steal at that price. Well, if I'm going to steal it, I can get it for nothing. A dollar and the tie is yours. Why, I paid 95 cents for it myself. Well, if you paid only 95 cents, why should I pay you a dollar? Well, the nickel's my profit. You know, I've got a wife to support. You think I'm going to help support your wife? Nobody supports my wife, not even me. i tell you what. You leave the necktie, I'll send you 95 cents Carol Woodland Cemetery. Woodland Cemetery? That's not my address. Well, it will be by the time I send you the 95 cents. <laughs> Some joke, eh? Ah, uh, I can see that I'm wasting my time here. Well, it took you long enough to find it out. Oh, goodbye. Did I hear someone come in? Yeah, a wise guy. He wanted a nickel for his wife. A nickel for his wife? Well, that sounds cheap enough. Was she good looking? All right, come in. Uh, Mr. Flywheel, permit me to introduce myself. I'm Bertram T. Bardwell. I suppose you've been hearing about my charity work and my fight against crime? Oh, yes, I've been hearing about you for a number of years, and I'm getting pretty sick of it, too. Uh, why, uh, uh, I happened to be in court this morning when I heard your thrilling address to the jury sent the man to prison for five years where he belongs. My speech sent him to prison? <laughs> That's a good one on the jury. I was defending that guy. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Flywheel. Let me ask you a question. Hey, I got a question too, boss. What animal likes dirt, always plays in the mud, and eats anything? I know, Ravelli. It's you. Oh, somebody told you. Uh, Mr. Flywheel, my organization is, is waging an intensive fight against crime in this city, and I feel that you're a man who can help us drive the crooks out of town. Hey, why should we drive them out? Let them walk. Nice work, Ravelli. Uh, well, you see, uh, gentlemen, my committee is determined to rid the city of public enemy number one, Big Joe Crookley. Although Crookley himself is in hiding, he is crime organized like a big business. In fact, uh, some of his gangsters have an office only two doors from here. Bodwell, you came to the right man. There isn't enough room in this town for gangsters and me, Waldorf T. Flywheel. That's why we're putting up a big hotel in the spring. Boss, you leave it to me. Ravelli's <laughs> pretty smart. I go next door and tell them gangsters to move. Excellent idea, Ravelli, but wait a minute. You've got your hat on wrong. Well, I don't know which way I'm going yet. And say, if you see my brother, tell him to wait. I don't know your brother. I never thought of that. All right, then tell him not to wait. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Flywheel, I can see you're a man of action. Uh, sometime later, I'd like to interest you in uh, charity work, too. Charity work? Hmm. Bodwell, I'm not the kind of fellow who likes to talk about his good deeds, but it may interest you to know that I've been sending pretty large-sized checks to various charities, and not even the charities know that the money came from me. Uh, but, Mr. Flywheel, I, I don't understand. But couldn't they tell by the name on the checks? Oh, no, that's how modest I am. I didn't even sign the checks. Why, Mr. Flywheel, what's this? Somebody just put a note under the door. Well, pick up the door and get it. It says... Why, uh... Good heavens, it's from Crookley's Gangsters. They've kidnapped Mr. Ravelli for meddling in their affairs. They kidnapped him? Listen to this. Unless you send us $10,000, we will kill Emmanuel Ravelli. They'll kill him? Mr. Flywheel, what are you going to do? Keep cool, Bodwell. Miss Dibble, take a letter to Big Joe Crookley. Dear Joe, received yours of the fifth instance, in which you state that unless I send 10000 you will kill Ravelli. I haven't got the money, but the proposition sounds very attractive. Send further details. Who 
Who's there? Open that door, Slim. It's me, Crookly. Okay, Chief. I was just scared it was the cops. You don't have to be scared. The cops won't ever find this place. Where's that fella, Ravelli? Inside eating. That's all he's been doing since we grabbed him off a week ago. Hey, Chief, is that lawyer Flywheel coming through with the ten grand? I think so. He's on his way over here now. Say, what if he brings the cops? Don't worry. He won't be go shooting off his mouth. I told Flywheel what's good for him. And now I think I'll have a little talk with Ravelli. Right, Chief. Hey, Ravelli. Ravelli, put that dish down. I'm talking to you. Oh, hello, Mr. Crookley. Sit down, have a piece of pie. I just had three pieces and I'm afraid to eat any more. What? Sure, if I eat too much of pie, I'm afraid I get to pyorrhea. Look here, Mug. We've been treating you pretty nice. You know why? Because if Flywheel don't show up with that 10,000 bucks today, you ain't gonna live very long. Hey, you crazy. I feel the fine. I think I eat some more pie. Uh, who is it? Say, Chief, there's a guy coming in. I think it's that flywheel. Flywheel? Don't let him in till I hide the pie. Yeah, bring him up here. Okay, Chief. This way, mister. Well, flywheel, I Cut out the formalities. When are you going to kill Ravelli? Hey, boss, is that what they want to do? Don't be alarmed, Ravelli. I've fixed everything. I've written a farewell not to your wife, and I've sent flowers to your sweetheart. I've also arranged for a nice, quiet little funeral. There'll be eight carriages for your family and a motorcycle for your friends. Quit stalling, Firewheel. Uh, did you raise that money? Oh, I raised the money all right, but unfortunately I had to spend it on Ravelli's funeral. <sighs> Come on in. Hey, Chief. I gotta talk with you. Aye. Right. I'll be right with you. Listen, Flywheel. You and Ravelli stay right here. Come over here, Slim. What is it? Chief. Butch just called and said we better lay low on these guys. The cops is all steamed up about kidnapping, and they kind of suspect you. Okay. I'll try to grab off the dough and throw them both out. Yeah. Maybe you better, Chief. Look here, Flywheel. Forget that ten grand. You give me five thousand dollars and, and Ravelli can leave here. Sure, I like to leave here. It's a very nice house to leave in. Well, what about that 5000 5000 Crookley, can you make it 3000 All right, I'll make it 3000 That's talking Crookley. Now if you'll make it 2000 I'll make it 1000 I haven't got the 1000 in cash, but I'll give you my note for 30 days. And if it isn't paid by then, you can keep the note. Listen, you guys. I'm going to give you exactly five minutes to make up your minds. When I come back, you're either going to fork over the dough, or it'll be curtains for both of you. Get me? Curtains for both of you. Now, think fast. Boss, we're in a tight fix. What are we going to do? First, Ravelli, I think I'll have a piece of that pie. Take some for yourself. Thanks, boss. I'm full. Well, I'll put some in your pockets. They're full, too. It's Crookly. Crookly? He's probably bringing us the curtains. Better hurry up, you guys. You've got just two minutes. Ravelli, I've got to give this a lot of thought. Hey, boss, i got an idea. Be quiet. I can't hear myself talk. That's all right. You ain't messing anything. Say, it's cold in this room. It is kind of chilly. See what the thermometer says. You, know, you can't believe that thermometer. One day it's 60, and the next day it's a 65. It's a no good. Well, the thermometer ought to be kept at 70. I can fix that easy. I just light a match under it. Watch. Ravelli, be careful of those draperies. Hey, boss, they're burning. Oh, boy, look at that fire. Oh, Crookly. What do you want? Can I use your telephone? You think I'm crazy? Answer my question first. Can I use your telephone? And let you call the cops, I suppose? Not at all. I just wanted to call the fire department and ask them where the nearest alarm box is. Crookly, I don't want to seem like an old gossip, but your house is on fire. What? What's that? What do you... What do you guys been up to? Slim! What's up? What's wrong? Quick! Bring some water! You can make mine ginger ale. Hey, I know a good song about pie. Good pie forever. Say, Crookley, why don't you call the fire department? I know all the boys at Hook and Ladder 78. And tell them to bring along a deck of pinochle cards. Nothing doing. I don't want no cops or firemen snooping around here. He's right, boss. There's no use in calling the fire department now. The, the place is already on fire. Ravelli, open the windows. Open the windows. This smoke is beginning to get to me. Yeah, there's too much smoke. You better put out your cigar. Boys, the fire's spreading fast. Better start running. Hey, 
Flywheel, I know a good place to run where, to. Where, Valley? where? To run to. To run to Canada. Hot stuff, eh, boss? Slim! It's the fire department! The cops, too! Watch your step! Well, this way, I think there's somebody in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. 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 Watch your step! Out of the place. Come on! Jay Cookley, you better duck. Don't worry, Slim. The cops around here won't recognize me. Listen, Flywheel, no cracks about me being Joe Crookley, if you know what's good for you. Count on me, Crookley, old boy. I'll see that your name isn't mentioned. Oh, policeman! Policeman! What is it? I want you to meet Emmanuel Ravelli, the fellow who started the fire. What? And before I forget it, when you report this fire, don't mention Joe Crookley's name because there's a warrant out for his arrest. Silence in the court. His honor the judge. Everybody rise. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The municipal court is now in session and stands until adjournment. What's the next case, clerk? It's the preliminary hearing. Your honor, in the case of Joseph Big Joe Crickley, charged with the kidnapping of Emmanuel Rivelli. Proceed with the hearing. Uh, Your Honor, please, uh, one moment. What is it, Mr. Bardwell? Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to say a few words in behalf of the Citizens Committee Against Crime. Of course, Mr. Bardwell. My organization regards this case as tremendously significant and wants to commend Mr. Flywheel here in open court for his noble, fearless, public-spirited activities in bringing that archenemy of the people, Joe Crookley, to justice. Thanks, folks, thanks. I've waited and struggled a long time for this honor. Why, I began life as a barefoot boy. That's a nothing, boss. When I was born, I was naked. (laughs) Gentlemen, the court wants this case to proceed. Very well, Your Honor. If you and Ravelli will keep your traps shut, I'll proceed. As I was about to say before the judge horned in, when I was a wee bit of a tot, I was left an orphan. You was left an orphan? What'd you do with it? As the fire will, the court must ask you to sit down. Now, Mr. District Attorney, proceed with the hearing. If Your Honor, please, the state's attorney's office has been requested by the Citizens Committee to let Mr. Flywheel conduct the prosecution because of his splendid work in tracking down Joe Crookley. Very good. Joseph Crookley, where's your attorney? Judge, I offered to pay plenty, but I couldn't get a lawyer in this town with nerve enough to take my case. I offered to pay as high as as $5,000. Just a minute, Your Honor. I'm talking not now as Flywheel, the lawyer, but as Flywheel, the man, the defender of human rights. In a court of justice, Your Honor, every man has certain inalienable rights. Every man has a right to advice and counsel of a lawyer, especially if he has $5,000. Crookley, I'll take your case. Try it out the 5,000 clams. Mr. Flywheel, the court was under the impression that you were going to prosecute Crookley. Well, I was under that impression, too, until I heard about the 5,000. Let's stop the case. The first witness for the defense is Emmanuel Ravelli. Mr. Flywheel, you can't call Ravelli for the defense. He's the man who says he was kidnapped. Ah, so that's the story he's been spreading. Well, he's a liar. Hey, what do you mean, call me a liar? You're a liar. I didn't call you a liar. See, Your Honor, he wouldn't tell the truth under oath. Ravelli, get up there and take the oath. Okay, boss. Order, order. Emmanuel Ravelli, do you promise to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Hey, you want me to lose my job? Emmanuel Ravelli, where were you born? I wasn't born. I had a stepmother. Come, come, Ravelli. Tell the court your birthday. What do you want to know for, Judge? You ain't gonna buy me nothing. He's right, Your Honor. You haven't bought a thing since you bought your place on the bench. See here, Mr. Flywheel. The court considers that remark most unnecessary and vicious. Hey, Judge, that's what I got for my birthday. You got what? Vicious! I got a telegram with very best vicious. <laughs> Some joke. Please. Can we get on with this hearing? Mr. Ravelli, will you kindly state your age? Sure, Judge. I'm just a 28. 28? Why, you said you were 28 when you appeared here in court two years ago. Well, when Ravelli says something in court, he sticks to it. There you are, Your Honor. I guess that'll hold you for a while. I make a motion that you dismiss the charges against my client. Motion denied. Mr. Flywheel, 
Have you any other witnesses? I don't think this one is intelligent enough to understand court proceedings. <laughs> Did you hear that, Ravelli? Your Honor, just to show you what a fool you're making of yourself, I'm going to give my witness an intelligence test. Ravelli, what's the first letter of the alphabet? Give me a hint. Ravelli, is that question so hard for you? No, the question's easy, but the answer's hard. All right, I'll try another one. Where was the Declaration of Independence signed? At the bottom! Right! The court cannot help but regard all this as irrelevant and immaterial. Mr. Flywheel, you now claim that Crookley did not kidnap Ravelli. How is that Crookley was found at the same scene of the crime where he was holding Ravelli prisoner? Frankly, Judge, that's got me kind of puzzled, too. Say, maybe it was Ravelli who kidnapped Crookley. Silence! Silence in the court! Your Honor, in a case as important as this, we cannot be swayed by our emotions. Nothing matters but hard, cold facts. Remember, I too have a baby. I met her in a dance hall. And, Your Honor, I couldn't go home and face my baby if I felt that I was defending a guilty man. Just a moment, Mr. Flywheel. The prosecution hasn't been heard from yet. Do you expect to talk much longer? Certainly. The longer I talk, the longer my client stays out of jail. Your Honor, Joe Crookley is really a fine boy at heart. He's very good to his family. He never goes home. Why, for a whole year, he didn't talk to his wife. And why didn't he talk to his wife? Because he didn't want to interrupt her. Your Honor, I demand a habeas corpus. A habeas corpus? You needn't be embarrassed, Judge. I don't know what I mean either. Mr. Flywheel, you've wasted enough of the court's time. Mr. District Attorney, call your witness. Your Honor, the state has been surprised in this case. We had counted on Emanuel Ravelli as our witness. And since he shifted to the defense... I'm afraid we have no case. In that event, I am forced, much against my will, to dismiss the charges and release the defendant. Joseph Crookley, Crookley, you may go. Thanks, Judge. So long there, Flywheel. Judge, he's leaving the courtroom. Bring him back. Bring Crookley back? What for? He owes me $5,000. Are you crazy, boss? We owe him $5,000. We owe him $5,000? Uh, sure, he had 10000 bucks in his pocketbook. Well? Well, I got his pocketbook. This concludes our Way Back When theater presentation for this evening. Brought to you by the Standard Oil Companies of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Louisiana, and the Colonial Beacon Oil Company. These associated companies maintain a system of service stations from Maine to Texas. Don't forget about tomorrow night's Way Back When theater presentation. It will be a great treat for music lovers. Good night for Esso and Way Back When Theater. Have a great evening, ladies and gentlemen. Join us again as we bring you exciting thrills and adventure, rip-roaring comedy, and shoot 'em up westerns and gangbusters. Next time, when your imaginations will be invited into the theater of the mind that is WBW Theater. <laughs>